my god, there's so many butterflies outside! <gasps> So as you can probably tell from the title, I am one month out from getting double drill surgery. If you don't know me already, my name is Chloe. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm currently a university student. I teach singing and I'm also a singer myself. You can probably see that uh, on other videos on my channel, but anyway, I'm just gonna give you a little intro. When I tell people that I'm getting double drill surgery, they're usually a little bit shocked or I get the reaction of, why do you need double jaw surgery? What are you talking about? You look fine. You seem fine. Don't see a problem. So it is quite a intense surgery. And so the reason that I'm getting it done is because my bite, the way that my teeth um, close and function when I eat food, when I talk and blah, 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 they don't work properly. This is a really hard video to make. I don't even know where to start. I've written notes because I just I feel like it's such a weird topic to try and think about um, chronologically. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to take you on a little journey of my tooth history. So I have a pretty severe underbite. Um, and even though I've lived with it my entire life and have kind of gotten used to um, how to function with it, it's not a physically functioning thing to have and like it creates a lot of jaw tension, jaw strain, it grinds your teeth down, you can't pronounce words properly. <laughs> when I was a little bit younger and my teeth had all fully grown in, everything was fine, my top teeth were over my bottom teeth, which is what you want. Um, still a lot of gaps and stuff, but then one of my front teeth started going backwards behind my bottom teeth. And so I went to my orthodontist and I said, hey, um, I've got a tooth problem. And she's like, all right, I'm gonna save your parents so much money get an ice cream with a popsicle stick, eat the ice cream, you're gonna have a really great time, and then grab the popsicle stick and basically every day, push your tooth forward a little bit. It's much cheaper than getting a plate and because it's only one tooth, it will work. And you know what, it did. All I needed to do was kind of put the pressure on this one tooth with a happy little popsicle stick. It's the cheapest dental work I've ever had done in my life. <laughs> a few more years went past and I was in year like 11 and 12 and this tooth, this damn tooth started to move back and I was like, okay, all right. Look, I'm older now. Um, maybe there's something that we can do to just like fix all my teeth. Like, why not? Let's just get some braces, chuck them on there and we'll be right. I went to my orthodontist and she was just like, okay, let's grab an X-ray of your jaw and see what's going on. Um, turns out I'm 100% underbite. <laughs> turns out when we got the X-ray back, it showed that my my jaws were just not aligned. So I had a pretty severe underbite in my actual jawbone. My teeth were being the best team players, they were being legends, and they were kind of compensating for this misalignment, right? So the way I like to describe it is like, this is my top jaw, like this bone here. This is my bottom jaw, this bit here, like your chin. And these are my teeth, right? So my top jaw and my bottom jaw were like that, they were not aligned and my teeth were like this. So my top teeth were all moved, like angled forward. And that's why they had gaps in them, right? My bottom teeth were all angled backwards. So they were actually starting to crowd a little bit. And then I was having like a crossbite. It was a mess. It was kind of a functional mess, but because I had already been getting problems, I was starting to get a lot of jaw pain and grinding and it wasn't a fun time, especially as a singer. I'd started doing a lot of singing at that point and all the muscle movement, not a good time. I thought we could just chuck some braces on it. She'll be right. We'll bring things around. We will get it together. <laughs> and my orthodontist was like, yeah, no, I think you need to get jaw surgery. There's no other way to fix your teeth. You're gonna keep having problems and there is no simple fix to your problems that you're having with your teeth. It came to the point where I had to decide whether I would do nothing with my teeth and just see how it goes. You know, I'd have little problems, I'd have the jaw pain. By the time I was 50, my teeth would be... I don't want to think about it. <laughs> my other choice was to get the jaw surgery and start with the treatment. So this was all in year 11 and I was what, 15, 16? It was quite a lot to think about. It was like, oh shit, my whole world has been turned upside down because I had no idea I had an underbite. 
Um, I knew that my chin was big, like Cinderella over here, but <laughs> but I had no idea. And the idea of having surgery to reconstruct my face, it was insane. All of the people that we went and saw to get second opinions said, the only thing you can really do is the jaw surgery to fix your bite. It would be irresponsible to jump straight into it. Like they would not suggest, you know, a day after you get told that you need jaw surgery to book in this jaw surgery. It's something you really need to think about because it is such a major surgery and a, a really long time of treatment. A few more years went past and I was about halfway through my undergrad university degree and I was doing singing. So I was doing a lot more jaw movement. I was needing my um, consonants and stuff to be really crisp, but my teeth were getting in the way and it was not, it was not beneficial to the career and the lifestyle that I wanted to create for myself. And I think a lot of people do find in university, they start to zero in on their values or kind of what they want their life to look like. Mine was with good fucking teeth. The first part of the journey of getting to jaw surgery was putting the braces on. So we found out that my jaws would actually fit quite well together once the teeth were straight up. So what the braces ended up doing was straightening my teeth out so they are horizontal, vertical, with my jaw perpendicular. But the problem with my face was that when I moved them back, there's that big gap in there. And so that's where I'm at right now, where I can't eat things properly because you can't cut things. You can't cut things when you don't have... Just giving you a quick little zoom of my face to see where my teeth are at right now to see kind of like a before um, surgery positioning stuff. So this is my smile just front on. You can see, you can see that there is an underbite there and my top jaw, you can't see any teeth when I just talk like this. Well, you can see a little bit of teeth. Anyway, this is side on. So, um, I am currently one month out from my double jaw surgery. I have been waiting for so long as soon as my teeth were ready to go, it would be about six months to a year that I'd have to wait to get into the hospital and get it done and be finished and like move on with my life. It didn't happen like that. Um, I think it's definitely a thing in Australia where we wait for the public system. In America, it's completely different. When you're waiting to be on the public waiting list for a hospital, um, especially in the small town that I was waiting to be, it just, it didn't happen. Jaw surgery, it's not a number one priority for the hospital. They have to do the emergency procedures, people who are in car accidents, like all that kind of stuff. And so the resources just weren't there. So I wanted to move to a new part of the country with my partner and basically like start my new life with my new face and my new job and my new degree and all this kind of stuff. And it would have been really cool. I came to a decision that it was taking so long for me to even get into the hospital to see anyone that I was just going to move and study um, where I needed to study and then come back when they needed me to come back. I can't keep putting my life on hold. I've got to go and do my thing because it felt like the system was holding me hostage and I couldn't move on with my life until this thing was done. Um, only a few months ago, I decided I couldn't wait for the public system to hook me up with some free surgery. Even though it would have been great, I'm a student, I don't earn a lot, but I decided to go private. It was so stressful for me to think about because private is obviously going to be so much more money, um, but luckily I had sorted out some private health insurance and a lot of that's going to be covered, so I feel very lucky that I, I have the opportunity to have that insurance. Anyway, that's kind of just like the, the more financial side of it. People don't really want to talk about that, but I think it's a major thing. It was definitely a major contributor to my decision. As soon as I got in contact with my private surgeon, they booked me in like ASAP. We booked a surgery date. <laughs> Which was insane. I, I had been waiting two to three years to know what my surgery date was gonna be. And I was putting everything on hold, thinking that 
I, I would, wouldn't know when I was going to get my jaw chopped open and be out of commission for a month. So getting that surgery date, it was such a good feeling. I told the ladies at the front desk when I was setting it, I was just like, I feel like I'm going to cry because I waited so long and I don't know why I hadn't done this sooner. And I was just so happy that, that a date had been put down, a date and a time. Okay, so my jaw surgery, what are the details about that? What they have decided to do, we had a bit of a measurement in my last appointment. I literally just bit my lip. We measured everything in the last appointment. And so I think, and I'll obviously get more info either closer or after the fact that I'm getting my jaw surgery done. Um, is that, so they're going to, originally they were gonna take my bottom jaw back quite a lot. Um, because they thought it was my bottom jaw that had just exceeded its growth and just gone crazy thinking that we'll kind of just leave my bottom jaw how it is um, But they're still going to straighten it up because the the middle line doesn't line up with the rest of my face and my top jaw That's where all the gnarly stuff is gonna happen. So They're going to bring my top jaw down maybe like four millimeters and then forward about three um and then they're moving my bottom jaw maybe like one millimeter to the right just to line everything up i might not be completely right about everything but this is kind of what i've been told to believe in a way so the way that they cut your jaw when you're undergoing double jaw surgery is so with the bottom jaw they do an internal incision just below your gums and they kind of peel everything back so they can get to that bone. They're like, cool, 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 this is where we're at. So they go into your bottom jaw and they do a diagonal cut, avoiding all of your nerves. And then they either, depending on what you need, if you need it to be extended or recessed, they will kind of make the difference in there, chisel away at the bone, put it back into place. So for me, they're going to um, chisel away at this side a little bit and kind of rotate it. And then to put it in place, they put some brackets. With my top jaw specifically, they, they cut all along here, up here, and then that's where they do the move. With my um, top jaw movement, they have to bring it my top jaw down and forward a little bit. You're thinking, but Chloe, if they bring it forward and down, what do they attach it all to? There's gonna be empty space. Well, you're correct. So what they do, it's all in the same surgery. They take a bone graft from my hip because it's my bone. That's where a lot of the, you got a lot of bone in your hip. They can use that. It's all right. I didn't know it wasn't there. So they'll scrape away a little bit and use it to fill up my top jaw. Because if they don't fill it up with bone or they just try and bracket it in a way, it's way more likely, if not, certain to relapse because there's nothing there for the bone to fall back on. There's nothing there to kind of create um, new structure. Um, so that's basically what's going to happen. Um, I expect to be in a lot of discomfort. I don't want to say pain, but I'm going to be on a lot of meds. So we're going to avoid pain as much, but I think it's going to be very discomfortable. I think it's going to be very uncomfortable, especially because I, I do a lot of stuff with my voice and I like to talk and it's going to be very weird, especially after the fact of, of healing that my, this whole part of my instrument is going to be changed. I plan to document my experience in this double jaw surgery. I found when I was researching um, about double jaw surgery before I even thought about getting it, listening to people actually speak about it and seeing their results after they get it, it helped me so much. This might be a similar situation to you, so hopefully this gives you a little bit more hope and like encouragement. I would not have come to the conclusion and feel as confident as I do without listening to other people talk about it or documenting their experience. So that's kind of, I'm trying to like pay it forward in a way to give my, put my individual experience out there. Um, because I couldn't really find a lot about singers getting double jaw surgery. I found this other girl, she's amazing, her name's Maria. I'll link her down below. She does a little bit of singing and she does acting and stuff. So, and her jaw surgery went so well. She looks amazing. Give her a watch if you are researching about your own jaw surgery and you're worried. She has a really good take on it. So I'm gonna make a few different little vlogs and updates and um, 
I don't know, just kind of put what I do into a video form. If any part of it will help somebody, then that is amazing. I know that I've watched so many, so many. My recommended on YouTube is just like, draw so draw so draw. So I'll do a few little vlogs, like what's in my hospital bag? Um, what did I actually use in my hospital bag? Um, like surgery day, how that actually goes down and, and the, the lead out into it. And, and then also what I really wanna do is compare pre-surgery and post-surgery singing. Um, I think it'll be really, really interesting. I will even see if I have to do a bit more training to get back into it because I think, you know, I've got a whole different mouth on me. Um, I mean, not whole different. I don't think it'll be that bad. That's my, that's my freaking quote for this entire surgery. I don't think it's gonna be that bad. It'll be fine. After that big long chat, I hope you know a little bit more about me, a bit more about my story, about my, my teeth story, and um, what to expect because I'm going to put out way more videos about the jaw surgery moment thing. So keep an eye out for that. Please subscribe if that's something you're into. I also do a few little DIYs and singing videos as well. I hope I made a little bit of sense. We'll see. <laughs> Alright, thanks guys. See you later. Bye!